Hello, my name is Gary Meyer, president and owner of J&G Technology who specializes in online training. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our certified calibration technician training and also give you some information about the exam itself and what it consists of in case maybe you haven't even heard of the CCT uh, exam. This is an exam that's uh, issued by the American Society for Quality, also known as the ASQ. And uh, we will give you some information where you can find information uh, on their website as well. The Certified Calibration Technician uh, Program is one that prepares technicians for work in calibration laboratories and testing laboratories. On this uh, video, I would like to give you some information about the exam itself, what it consists of, also the requirements that are needed to take the exam, some dates and costs where you can find information about that, some of the statistics as to individuals that have already taken the exam, and then also what is required as far as renewal of the exam. So first of all, what is a certified calibration technician? A certified calibration technician tests, calibrates, maintains, and repairs electrical, mechanical, electromechanical, analytical, and electronic measuring, recording, and indicating instruments, and equipment for conformance to particular established standards. The exam itself is a total of 125 questions. The ASQ says that you are required to complete this exam in four hours. In order to pass the exam, you need to get a, an approximate score of 70%. They have a specific way of grading and determining that passing grade. And it's on what is called a cut score. That means that certain questions have more points than other questions. And they're all tallied up at the end to determine your final result. This is an open book test, so you can bring along any references that you want as far as the certified calibration technician, such as the metrology handbook, the uh, certified uh, calibration technician primer, which is available from the uh, Indiana Quality Council, and also any other references that you might have, such as uh, conversion charts, uh, anything that you would download from the internet that might help you in passing the examination. The exam itself is divided up into five different parts as shown here. First of all is general metrology. There's about 35 questions in that category. Second one is measurement systems, about 22 questions. Calibration systems, 33 questions. Measurement uncertainty, and applied mathematics and statistics is about 20 questions and the final category is that of quality systems and standards consisting of about 15 questions. These are all jumbled up in the exams so they're not categorized uh, part by part as you take the exam. Some of the suggested references and materials that you can bring along, I've already mentioned a couple of those but the American Society for Quality CCT Prep Guide, which is one that I wrote and uh, published, and it's available from my website at jngtechnology.com. Also any comprehensive unit conversion books that you might have or mathematical tables. Uh, the Handbook of Metrology that I mentioned is published by the ASQ and is available on their website. Also there's a uh, document published by the uh, NIST organization, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and that's the uh, document that's labeled TN1297, and this one is on measurement uncertainties and how NIST interprets and reports measurement uncertainty. Also a copy of the ISO IEC 17025 standard for calibration and testing laboratories may be a handy thing to have along since a lot of the test questions are based on uh, that document as well. There's another one that uh, may give you some additional information 
good one to look at. It's called The Philosophy of Calibration. Uh, this was published by the John Fluke Company. Also, the uh, Indiana Quality Council that I mentioned is, has the CCT primer. And then uh, there's another, just a page or two that uh, will be helpful to you, and that's the National Conference of Standards Laboratories. And they have what's called an RP list, which is a listing of recommended practices available from their website as well. You also need to take along a scientific calculator. No programmable uh, calculators, that is, those that have a full keyboard and uh, uh, has a way of storing formulas and so forth. Those are uh, not uh, allowed in the exam, but any other statistics type of calculator is allowed. This uh, calculator should be able to calculate the deviation, standard deviation that is, for the uh, population and the uh, sample of uh, statistical samples. It should also be able to calculate the mean and uh, also the uh, variance for both population and the sample. So these are some statistical uh, data uh, functions that you need to be able to manage on your calculator. Trigonometric functions are also required in some cases for the sine, cosine, and tangent, plus uh, inverse functions are usually included on that type of a calculator. Also, it's very useful to have some calculator that will do the log, both the natural uh, log and the exponential log, ln, and then the DRG conversion is very helpful in the case of adding uh, or subtracting degrees, radians, and grads as far as uh, angular uh, measurements are concerned. Also, the calculator should have the uh, capability of entering in exponents, and that is with the, say, an EE key or whatever other uh, nomenclature is used by the calculator manufacturer. One of the ones that I recommend is the TI-30XA. It's a relatively inexpensive calculator, probably around uh, 10 to 15 dollars at your uh, local uh, department uh, stores. And also uh, it gives you all of the functions uh, that you need. One step up from that is the TI-36, which gives you some additional uh, functions and allows you to uh, do two statistical registers instead of just one and make comparisons. However, in the exam itself, uh, this TI-30XA should be very sufficient for the exam. It's also very important when taking this exam to know where to find information. That is, since it's an open book test and there's a wealth of information that's available, you need to find this information quickly. Good indexing is very important and it's uh, really imperative that you be able to go to a specific place in a textbook or in the primer or in uh, uh, my preparation guide in order to find information on a specific topic. There's only 240 minutes, that's four hours, to take the exam. There's 125 questions, so if you do the math, that means you've got 1.9 minutes per question on the average. Some of those questions, of course, are from route memory and things that you've known maybe for years, and you can answer them in uh, five seconds. However, there are some calculations in some of the questions that you need to be able to use the calculator, and it's going to take you probably a little bit longer time than the 1.9 minutes. So you have to be a good manager of your time. Be sure to check to see how well you're progressing as you're going through the exam itself. Some of the uh, CCT requirements to take this exam requires you to have five years of experience on the job uh, in one or the other areas, one or more areas, uh, of the uh, CCT, what's called the Body of Knowledge, or abbreviated uh, BOK in some publications. And uh, if you look at those, you'll see that it is very wide uh, in spectrum. And uh, if you've uh, worked in the field for uh, three years, uh, then part of that uh, time will be waived uh, as long as you have a diploma from a technical, military, or trade school. 
So two years would, would be waived off of that. Also, if you have an associate degree in the uh, fields of the technical areas here, two years will be waived. The bachelor's degree or the master's degree also waive uh, two years. So three years working on the job plus a two-year uh, schooling, a uh, two-year degree would uh, suffice to meet that uh, requirement. As far as the exam dates are concerned, the primary dates are in June and December, and those are listed on the ASQ website at http slash slash asq.org. And you can check that for also locations and the dates. These exams are given in many different places in the uh, uh, local sections of your local uh, ASQ. Some international sites are also available and several conferences uh, sponsor the exam as well. So check out the ASQ website for that information. There is a charge to take the exam and it depends on whether you're a member or not. If you're a non-member there is a given fee. If you're an ASQ regular member there's a different fee and then if you uh, don't pass the test the first go around there's a uh, fee which is a reduced fee as far as a retake on the exam itself. There's also an AC ASQ membership available on their website and you can check out the, uh, the price for that. Usually the price of the ASQ membership uh, is saved in uh, getting that plus the uh, regular member fee here versus the non-member fee. Have here some statistics, probably a little difficult to read on the screen here, but just to give you an idea that this is a salary by number of ASQ certifications for USA uh, respondents here. Those that typically have one certification uh, are in the 61 percent. This is the number of ASQ certifications versus the percentage of respondents to this particular survey. Here, for instance, uh, for one certification, if the salary is up around uh, $71,865, two certifications will step that up to uh, a little bit more. And you can see the bar graph here gives us an indication that the more certifications, the greater the salary range. So this is uh, maybe a little incentive for you to uh, take the CCT exam. Hopefully it will also get you in the door of uh, many places which uh, are now requiring that you have a CCT exam if you're working in the field of metrology and sp more specifically in a uh, calibration laboratory. ASQ US average, this was a few years back so this may be a little bit outdated but you can see the relative uh, numbers here as far as the CCT statistics without a, a uh, ASQ certification the salary was around 39625 With certified calibration uh, technician, the uh, salary jumped up about $16,000 on the average. This is no guarantee that you're going to get that much more money, but uh, it may be a help and uh, uh, could be a little leverage there that you could use to come to your boss and say, I think I should really have a little bit more money. Certified uh, quality technician, a uh, little bit uh, lower there, but there is some, usually some type of an increase. For those sitting for the exam, taking all of the information, and this information goes back uh, probably about uh, nine or ten years here, but uh, it gives you a relative picture here that about 70% of the personnel pass on the first exam. Now this includes those that are just going in and hitting the exam cold so that if you uh, get some training up front it's going to give you a much better chance of passing the exam on the first uh, go around. To be recertified this uh, certification issued by the ASQ is good for three years. Every three, three years you have to recertify and you do this with with uh, what's called RU units or recertification units and 
it's a, a requirement that you have 18 RUs here. And these can come from a lot of different things that you do if you're working in the field. Uh, for instance, professional development gives you uh, a 0.1 unit per hour. Uh, employment is 0.3 per month for full time. So that adds up pretty quickly. Uh, also uh, 0.15 for part time. Other things that you can use to get your certification or research is being an instructor, uh, going to different types of meetings, uh, getting up more certifications is a big one. More certifications uh, gives you about one uh, RU per initial certification. Uh, videotapes and audio tapes, you need to keep a good log on this and there is a log available uh, on the uh, ASQ website. Also, uh, if you're a student, uh, if you're on uh, committees, uh, proctoring exams, publishing papers, uh, publishing a book, uh, publishing uh, uh, any uh, type of a, a presentation such as this. So if you have more questions about the Certified Calibration Technician or CCT uh, exam or training or materials that are available, visit my website http slash slash jg dash technology dot com or you can give me a call at 952-935-1108 with any questions. Or if you want to drop me an email, gmeyer at jg-technology.com. I'm Gary Meyer, and I welcome your call. Thank you.